Hello and welcome to We Willy Wonderfuls video tutorials for Amy the Giraffe. I've had lots of requests for uh, tutorials showing the giraffe because she's quite a popular character. Um, so I'm going to work through the videos and show you how to make her. My little helper here is actually the baby giraffe. I don't have a large Amy at the moment because fast as I make them people tend to uh, tend to claim them so I don't have one at the minute but we're going to be making one. Um, so this first tutorial on Amy the Giraffe we're going to show you what's in the kit so you can see what you receive. We're going to show you how to read the pattern and how to start with a magic circle and do the double crochet stitch. Should last about 10 minutes. You probably will need to pause quite a few times, re-watch it just to get make yourself familiar with it. Uh, don't worry if you have to do that. I did exactly the same when I started. I'm um, just showing my contact details so you can see my website, wewillywonderfuls.com. And I do have an email there as well, which I'm very happy for you to contact me if you get stuck with any part of the pattern, um, anything you're not sure of, do please get in touch because I'm, I'm quite happy to do that. My name's Lisa and I'm Mrs. Wee Woolly Wonderfuls. Um, I created um, this independent business um, after having struggled so much trying to learn to crochet. Couldn't understand what the patterns meant. It was all like a foreign language to me. And when I tried to look up video tutorials or use a book to learn. It didn't seem to match what my pattern said. And then I got mixed up with United Kingdom terms and US terms, which have the same name stitches, but the stitches are actually different. So I ended up with some weird and wonderful looking uh, crochet that looked nothing like it was supposed to. So after all that frustration, I just thought there must be an easy way. So I came up with the idea of Wee Willy Wonderfuls, which you receive a kit um, there is a beginner kit which is the bunny kit but I'm planning to make videos for all of the different animals so people can start with their favourite and just watch the video tutorials and learn as they go. All of my patterns are written in the same format so once you understand one they're all very straightforward to follow. So less of the waffle, let's go. Right, so we have our We Will and Falls giraffe kit. We're going to make her in traditional giraffe colours which is my favourite. She's also available in pink and blue which absolutely gorgeous for new babies um, but we're going to do the traditional colours today so inside your kit you will find your wool which is always a good high quality on the back of the label it will tell you what the wash instructions are um, I do do a high quality acrylic which is all man made should you not like using anything um, with animal products and this is much it's very soft and squeezable but it is hard wearing especially if the toys are for children you can put these in quite a low temperature. You can put them in the machine, wash them. They'll still come out brilliant. And the colours won't fade. And it's quite hard wearing. We also do some kits in um, a beautiful um, alpaca and wool, which are even softer to the touch. And they're hand washable, but they do give an extra luxurious feel. So more for grown-ups or if you want something just a little bit more luxurious. Um, what else do we have in our kit? We have... A little bag of notions. I love these little bags. So handy for putting things in. Um, we have wool for her eyes. We have a needle for sewing, which is blunt ended, which is um, much easier to use um, with with um, wool toys. We have a little stitch marker, just a standard plastic one. Some people prefer those. And we also have in each kit a little stitch marker, which is in the shape of the animal. That you're making which is just a little cute extra addition that we uh, that I did recently so I'll pop all those back we'll just use the plastic one for now I'll pop the other things to one side we also receive we also receive in your kit the stuffing enough to make the animal you'll probably find you've got too much of everything don't worry if you do um, I just try and add extra in every kit to make sure you don't run out if for any reason you did if you did a part wrong and couldn't salvage it and you run out do get in touch I'm quite happy to um, send you some extra to finish it the wool is, um, sorry, the stuffing is high quality um, ball stuffing, which is in like, uh, which is in little pieces, which seems like a bit odd to start with. It's different to normal, usual stuffing. But what you will find is it doesn't clump into big pieces and leave you with a lumpy looking animal. So it's much easier to use, much easier to get a nice round shape, looks much more professional. So I'll put that to one side for now. We have a soft grip crochet hook. Um, I personally tested lots, of, tried lots of different hooks from bamboo um, to metal to all different ones to see which was the most comfortable. And I found these, I can work with them for a long time without ever 
finding my hand starts hurting. Lovely and comfortable. Um, I also had a friend who regular crochets who tested them out for me and she decided that she loved the same one too. So that's the one we go with. I've even had people ask me what it is. So we've started doing the, the full sets if you want a full set of them and all the different sizes. But you'll receive the correct size for what you need in your kit. One of my little cards, just so you've got my details. Um, little cardboard wallet just to protect your pattern while it's in the purse it doesn't get squashed it's a good idea to keep it in this all the time so it keeps it nice and of course your pattern um, so this one is in the giraffe so I'm going to run through the front it's always worth reading through a pattern when you first get it just to make yourself familiar with it um, and to see what the abbreviations are and um, they do vary between different designers but we but we will and wonderful stick with the same ones right through all the patterns to make it nice and simple. So this pattern is written in United Kingdom terms. Um, if you are used to working with United States terms, the double crochet is simply a single crochet. So just substitute that throughout. If, if you're not sure what that means, don't worry about it. Just, uh, <laughs> just go with us. It's UK terms. We're going to work in rounds, which is like working in spirals. Um, which makes it nice and simple, much less sewing up. If you're a knitter, the seaming is always the bit I didn't like sewing up, but there's much less sewing up with this because you're making a full body shape. So all we need to do is sew on the arms, the legs, the head. We're not doing seams, so much easier. Um, it gives you the size of your giraffe at the end. Um, everything is written in numbers so you can keep track of where you're up to. Um, the MC, so we'll start with the abbreviations we're using in the pattern, stands for magic circle. So when you see that, we're going to make a magic circle with the number of double crochet stitches that it says on the pattern. But say, don't worry, I will show you what each of these means physically so you can, you can learn from it. DC just stands for a double crochet. Now this is the stitch that we will use right throughout the whole animal. So once you've got the magic circle and the double crochet mastered, there's only a few extra things to learn and you can literally, you're off making the, actually all of the animals. DEC is short for decrease, and that's simply, we're just going to crochet two stitches together. I'll show you the invisible decrease method, simply because, don't worry if it sounds complicated, it's it's not, it's just a very neat way of decreasing, which isn't noticeable on your, on your finished giraffe. INC is short for increase, which means we're simply going to make two stitches, do two stitches into one stitch, to increase the number. So this is used when we're we're going to his fatter tummy, making him a little bit bigger. Um, so that's an increase. BLO just stands for back loop only, where we crochet just into the back loop. But again, I'm going to show you that as we go along. Brackets simply mean to repeat the instructions inside the brackets by how many times it says afterwards. So on this particular instruction, I've given you an example. DC increase, we're going to do a double crochet, then an increase, and we're going to do that three times. So that would be double crochet increase, double crochet increase, double crochet increase. Um, I do explain about colour changing on there as well, uh, but I will show you that of course. Um, the way I, I do it is a little bit neater so you can't really see the change. Um, also the advice, if the toy is for a child under three years old, be very careful, don't add buttons, anything that can be pulled off, and make sure you're stitching things, go around twice, uh, to make sure it's safe so that pieces can't fall off. That's very important, we don't want um, any bits falling off that go into small children's mouths. Um, but these, that's why we have embroidered eyes on everything, so it's much safer, just sew everything on very securely. And the, all the wools that I use in my kits are C tested, so they are approved yarns as well to make sure they're safe, there isn't any um, pigments in the ink that could be dangerous, and that's all I will use in my kits to make sure they're safe. So let's get started. We're going to start with, it says on here, uh, let's begin your giraffe. So we're going to start with the body. Um, feel free to make it in any order that you like, but I try to do it the, the most straightforward way, so it's sometimes easier just to follow the, the instructions. Um, beginning at the base, so we're going to start at the bottom and using the main colour. So our main colour is this beautiful colour here, which is the main colour for Amy. So we're going to undo the wool. On the back of the label, it always tells you what the wash instructions are. It's not for the wool. I did have someone ask me that, so you don't need to wash the wool before you use it. But that is if ever you need to wash the, the finished animal. Um, so we'll put the second colour to one side. 
and we will use our main colour. You can start from the outside or you can work from the strand which pulls out from the inside. With it being a, a yarn cake, it doesn't matter which way you do that. It's absolutely fine either way. And our first instruction, line one, is MC six stitches. So we're going to do a magic circle with six double crochet. So that's what we're starting with. And it shows you helpful pictures as we go along. So figure A, that shows you what it should look like when you've done that. So you can look and see, see if you think it looks correct. It's just, just a little bit of extra help with the photographs. So this is how we do a magic circle. This you will need to try and do several times, probably rewind, keep trying because it is a little bit more complicated. But once you've got the hang of this one, this is the hardest thing in the whole of the crochet, I think. So we're going to start with the wool here. We're going to wrap it around my fingers twice. So this is the end, and this is the part that leads to the, the ball of wool. Grab your crochet hook, hold it like that. Nice place to rest your thumb there. And we're going to pop the crochet hook through here. Grab that yarn. It's got a hook on the end for a reason. It's for pulling the yarn around. So we're going to go through there, pull it through, and then we're going to grab the yarn over the top of the ring and pull it through like that. And that is not our first stitch. That is just a slip knot to keep things in place. So we're going to do, and this is actually a double crochet stitch that you are doing here. Um, so you're learning the double crochet stitch at the same time. So now we're going to do our first stitch. So we're going to go underneath those two strands, grab the yarn and pull it back through. We've now got two loops on our hook. And now we're not going to go under again, we're going to go over. So it's under and over. So we're going to over the top, grab the wool and pull it through both of the loops. You might find you get it caught the first few times. Um, don't worry too much, pop back through and pull it through, trying to keep it just one thread. Um, it's just a matter of angling. Once you get used to it, you will angle it correctly without even thinking about it. So there we have one stitch. So we're going to repeat that six times. So we're going to go under, grab the yarn and pull it through, and then over the top and pull it through. So just think under, pull it through, over, pull it through. Two, and then we're going to under, over. Oops, let's take another one over there. I can let's have a look. Right, so we're going to go under and over. Under and over. I've lost count now already, see. <laughs> so to count our stitches, we don't count the bit at the bottom. That is our slip knot. One, two, three, four, five. We have five stitches, so we're going to do one more. So under, grab the yarn, pull it through. Over, grab the yarn and pull it through. So now we have six stitches. And when we take it off our fingers, which we can do now, we're left with this. Now, this bit is a little bit tricky, but we're going to manage it quite easily. You can take, pull it up a little bit just to make your loop a bit bigger so you don't lose it and take your hook out if it makes it easier. And what we're going to do now is hold the base very tightly. It's very important, otherwise this won't work. Then we're going to tug on one piece of the wool and the other, try them both. One will pull through, one won't. One will just go like that and not move, the other one will. So the one that will pull, we're going to pull and it will, the other ring will vanish inside and pull out here. So we have, it looks like this. And now we have one big loop. And now we're going to pull this end here. So it all seems a little bit fiddly, but just watch the video several times until you get it. Now that will pull through like that. That big loop will disappear and you're left with your magic ring. And pop your hook back in. Try to keep your tension the same if you can. Don't pull your stitches really tight. Don't have them really loose. Just work somewhere in the middle. You might find that things look a little bit um, uneven to start with, but it's simply practice. Once you once you get the hang of it, once you practice, your stitches will all start automatically to look the same and it will become neater and neater. So don't worry too much at the moment. Now, a stitch marker we're going to now use. We're going to pop it on here, not on the loop that's on the hook, because that's our what we're working with, but the, the V here, which is a stitch, so the last V, we're going to just pop it through one of the loops there and fasten it. And now we know we keep this marker on the last stitch of every round throughout the whole giraffe because then we know when we're at our last stitch. Um, you can do it without a marker if you want, but 
even I keep forgetting where I am. It just takes one little distraction and I've forgotten where I'm up to. So it's much easier just to keep it on. And you can also count your stitches to make sure you have the right number. We'll do that briefly. So we have one stitch now, which has got the marker in. Two, three, four, five, six. And the little bit that looks quite small and tight at the back is just the slip knot. It's not a stitch. So we're literally counting the V's. Think of the V as a stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that little bit there is the slip knot. So that's not what we're working in. So now you've made the magic circle. You've also learned a double crochet. And in the, the next section, we're going to be following the rest of the pattern. So uh, thank you for watching and I will see you then. Goodbye.